Ooh. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Ugh. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Morning Coffees with James. I'm James, and this is my morning coffee show. And this is my morning coffee. Now, right now, uh, I'm giving Agent Cooper a break, and I'm giving Mount Bird a break, and a fine song, a damn fine cup of coffee, a bit of a break today, because I want to do a little bit more, you know, something that's a little, you know, change of pace you know downstairs doing this you know you can tell it's 5 23 in the morning it's early for a coffee so I might, might as well have a cigarette in the morning now we're gonna have a coffee and then we're gonna do you know no no i changed my mind uh no no cigarettes i actually had a Bit of a, you know, then again, I didn't have a smoking problem. Well, I had a smoking problem, but I had a smoking problem. Um, if you know what I mean. Um, let's just say it was it was a certain birthday, and you know what? No, well, here's the thing. It's not like you know, smoking cigarettes. It was more in the sense of I was using. I was using this, and I've, I've, I've talked about it many times, but like I was using it as a uh, kind of a scapegoat in a sense. I was just using it just to be like, yeah, I worked all day, and now I'm just going to smoke weed and get you know messed up. You know, it's like I decided not to get messed up. I decided not to. I decided to take a break from it. You know what I mean? It was like, okay. And it was a correlation. I was dealing, dealing with something else, so. Eight days in. Eight days in. So, oh. Getting those crusties out of my eyes. Uh, uh, there we go. Uh, eight days in. And I feel great. I feel great. I actually do feel great because, um, actually, no, I'm going to try it on an angle. There we go. There we go. This is my kitchen. Oh, this is my bed at this kitchen. Because I'm a little, and that was my hairy chest. You saw there. You go here again. Here is the kitchen. There we go. And there's a damn hat. avocado. Only the hippies eat this, but apparently I'm being cursed by people who have healing crystals. It is the curse of the people with the healing crystals. Oh my god. Well, one of the comments, I was reading one of the comments and somebody, I'm not going to mention your name because, do you want me to mention your name? Are you okay with that? I'll call you, I'll call you Rose because that's, it's a good name. I think I'll, I'll call you that. Uh, it's, uh, actually, I know who you are, so it's, I used to know who you and. Well, I do. I still know you. It's just... Ugh. I Alright. I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, well, you. I think, I think these are coming back, and I think you were responsible for that. I think you somehow were, like, got offended by the fact that I had made fun of the avocado, and now you're like, oh, I will send the avocados after him, because now I have... More avocados back there. And, I don't know, every time I see avocados, I think of that, so it's like, oh. And so I just bought them. I'm like, you know what, maybe this weekend I'll have myself some uh, avocado and toast with a big old piece of steak on there. Um, just to even things out. Uh, actually, no, that wouldn't be a bad idea. You got your proteins, you got your fats, and then you got your carbs. Boom, you're done, you're done. You go home, you, 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 you go watch a movie, you go take a shower, and then you go to bed, and you have a nice dream about my brother. Well, in my case, I have dreams about my brother, so. Did I have any dreams today? Nah, not really, nothing spooky. I had a dream about my attic and a the Phil Collins song, uh, The Roof is Leaking. I shit you not, it was uh, very funny. I was, uh, it, it, the, the, by, like, the room I used to have in this house was in the attic, and 
the attic, it, like, the attic doesn't leak, but, like, it looks bigger. And apparently there was, like, a lot of stuff in there that was, like, it just looked torn out. And I was just, like, laying in there. And I was, like, here, I was, like, all of a sudden I heard the song. The roof is leaking in the house is howling. Na, 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 na. Look that song up. That song is damn good. The Roof is Leaking by, uh... It's off his Face Value so uh, album. And I can't... Justice to save my life. Uh... But yeah, it's... It's crazy. I'll tell you that much. It's very crazy out there. But, uh... No, uh, let's see, what can we talk about today? I wanted to, I don't, uh, but again, I'm trying to avoid politic talks, because I feel like I, I've been talking too much about that, then again, I'm passionate about that, I, I've been doing it on my regular Instagram channel, my morning coffee, so James channel, uh, my Facebook, and YouTube, not BitChute yet, well, BitChute, yeah, well, BitChute's pretty much a free speech area, and YouTube is just like, doesn't know what the hell free speech is. So, unless you're Markiplier or PewDiePie, well, they haven't gone after PewDiePie. Well, they have gone after PewDiePie, but PewDiePie has been like, you know, bitch lasagna. It's like, that's that's the brilliance of PewDiePie. They, they try to tear him down, but he's like, no, I'm Swedish. You can't mess with me. Ah. And he's not, and by the way, he's no I-dubs, too, you know. Which, that whole controversy, too, it's, like, very weird with him and his wife. Like, I'm, I'm gonna give my two cents on this real quick. Um, I, if, if you're a person who wants to do, you know, do photos of yourself, and you want to make money, that's fine. If you want to make... Making money in this country should not be... A, like, we should not sin on people for making money. Like, I do an honest day's work doing HVAC. That's fine. That's fine. You know. But it's hard labor. And I don't think it is meant for everybody. But... You know, even labor jobs. They're not meant for everybody. You know. And the fact that... You know... If you have if you have what it takes, and I mean like if you have what it takes to do modeling of that kind of caliber, go for it. Make make some money. It's like people are just so like they they, they have this idea in their head that they've become this like the heck was that? What? In, I don't know what that was. Um, I'm not gonna tell you what that was. They have this idea in their head that they have to do. You know, oh, oh, you're an awful person. You're a thought if you do this. It's like, really? It's like, I don't, I don't get it for for the life of, life of me because it's like, you know, we've been doing like we've been like buying Playboys and hustlers and magazines of you know, women doing tasteful nudes. But well, hustlers not really a tasteful nude magazine, so. Um, for ages, and nobody batted an eye. But now that we've gotten into the digital age, it's you know you're a thought, you're 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 this, you're that, you're a simp, you're you know. Which I get, you know, people, and I get the simp argument, and I get the e girl, like tragedy right there, where it's like, guys think if I pay money to this person. This particular email, a female who is doing a live live stream Twitch, wiggling her butt. She is going to date me. It's like no, I know it's a business. I know it's a business. Like, it, it, it's like going to a strip club. It's that's like you know what that is. That's like that's the like, people call that the, what what you call people go to a strip club Sims. No, they know like they want to see live entertainment. And they're gonna pay for it. They they know they they know they're not like gonna get a girl at a at a at a strip club. They got they gotta go to a nice place. They gotta go out and meet people. They gotta make themselves. But and here's an here's an interesting tip. But you gotta make yourself interesting. Like you have to make yourself des not desirable in a sense. You gotta make yourself worthy, if that makes any sense. It's 
it all well, makes sense because it's like you have to make yourself worth it, worth, worthy because you can't be just this guy who's like playing video games all day and complaining about you know the last of us having and i'm going to mention the last of us having super mutants in there Ooh, i'm I, I keep busting on it but it's like it's the truth it's the truth I know, and it, and we have to, and I'm, I'm, you know, it makes me laugh though. It makes me laugh that people are just upset over that game, and I'm like, it's not. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know what I was talking about. I was trying to trans, trans transition from one thing to another, but it's just so. Oh, I don't know. I think we should stop calling them simps and we must try to re-educate them. It's like, look, but, you know, anybody who's a beta boy, anybody who's a incel, it's like, look, if you really, if you want to make an exchange on something, go get a prostitute. But, but they're, they're straight up and all that. But if you want a meaningful relationship, uh, go out there. Just go out there and make yourself worthy. Like, go exercise. Go clean yourself up. Wash yourself. Clean yourself. You know what I mean? Stop watching porn. You know, stop watching, you know, hentai. You know, stop jerking off. That's that's the, that's what it just comes down to. People people who overly masturbate, that's your problem right there. You have to be like, okay, I gotta get away from this. And I, I, I know it's a joke, but it's like, I don't feel like it, nobody takes it seriously. I mean, like, you know, no not November is a funny thing, but it's like... It's funny to say that or no fap thirty day no fap, but it's kind of a true thing. It's people, people do have this issue. You know what I mean? It's like because I feel like they're lonely and they just they resort to that because they're just you know there's no other drug. You know, companionship is kind of dead in this country in my mind. It's like you know the reason why people resort to substance abuse because they again I talk about because they're trying to comfort themselves in the blanket you know what i mean it's like it's you know i don't want to deal with the reality and it's like deal with it because it, it will help you in the long run to find happiness and like w like what i'm doing right now it's like you know i well when i started morning coffees with james on instagram i was doing it for a uh not i was doing it to get back into the swing of things and do something that's like was easy to do first thing in the morning on a show that was like just just a, just a, just a thing that I got grew popularity on like I was already popular on Instagram like I grew popularity by being funny being a construction worker making jokes about stuff and then I was just like you know what no more jokes I'm just going to just jump right into just talking whatever I want to talk about like a Joe Rogan podcast but Honestly, I want to talk about topics that really do matter to me, and it's like people nowadays are like, and especially blue collar people who, I, 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 it's this cult of work where it's like just focus, just focus on the work, and just you'll be fine. It's like no, it's because like we need to talk about those things that we need to talk about, like health issues and stuff like that, and hell, even the lockdown, like. Yo, it, it, just because we, like, as a, as someone like me is in a business that's essential, it's like, the other businesses have to be essential, too. Like, you know, I don't, I don't blame Mike Rowe or anything like that, but I blame their asshole ways for being like, yeah, get a real job. And it's like, when all those jobs you called unreal disappear, you're like, fuck, I need to get my hair cut. Oh, I need to get this. I need to get my avocados. It's like, it's like, you know, oh, oh, everything's closed. I need to go to my bait shop. It's like, yeah. How does it feel to have nothing else open except for your little essential business? How does that feel? It's that, uh, uh, I gotta get a better camera set up. It's, it's that essential business bullshit mindset. You know, it's, it, or pretty, it's that, mindset of I'm more important than everybody else because I do this job like I was watching Renegades cut on uh the cult the cult of work and it's a bit leftist I'm not gonna lie it's a bit of a leftist propaganda machine but the truth be told he makes some seriously good points about capitalism and he makes some seriously good points about 
the mindset of a worker. Like, I'm, again, I don't mind anybody who's a hard worker. Like, here's the thing. We should not never ever, and I mean this, ever shit on anybody who's a hard worker. We should never want to be angry at somebody who wants to be lazy either. It's, you know, and especially like, again, on the, like both of them, it's like the one who wants to work hard and wants to do stuff. It's like, yeah, he, he has to work hard. But, you know, when you hustle all the time, it's like you lose focus on what you're doing. You know what I mean? It's like, I actually had that same problem. I went to the gym constantly, constantly. And I was, because I was just unhappy with the way I looked. And one day I just like was trying to figure out what's wrong with me. Like I was starting to really, yeah. And I looked at like, like I looked at some interview, like some things. And one of them was just take a break. If your bench is failing, go take a break. And I was like, oh shit, I never deload. And then one size, the deload is basically taking a week off or doing light and i mean light exercise like yoga or stretching or running or one thing you know you know thing like mix like shadow boxing or anything like that walking well indigestion there james yes but you know hard work is not bad the idea of hard work getting something done and then being rewarded is okay but when the reward is, you know, when you don't get rewarded, the hard work should being a hard worker should not be the the reward. In a sense, it's like it's like what Nick Offerman said. You know, you know, if you just drink, if you just get a beer and you didn't do anything, it's like fuck you. You don't deserve it. But if you did, that beer tastes like the nectar of the gods. I don't think he put it that way, but I think you know, drinking. Uh, what he was describing as something else is not that tasty. It's not that enjoyable. But drinking the nectar of the gods does. But, you know, with Renegade's Cuts thing. He was talking about the episode of Frank Grimes, Homer's Enemy. Um, and someone made a point in the comments that, like, Frank Grimes was just a workaholic. And he was, you know too occupied with this job to, to focus on anything else having a family you know having you know homer home, everybody craps on homer but homer like is just lazy like is kind of truthful when he's and i say this because homer is just a lazy guy but he you know has the right to be lazy he works he does what he has to do to feed his family and you know you know, support his house and stuff like that, and, you know, he, he also comes to love, he comes back to a house of love, you know what I mean, his wife loves him, his kids love him, yeah, even Bart, I mean, Bart loves him, but it's like, Bart, let's be honest about fathers and sons, they will torture each other to the bitter end, trust me, I have my dad, and he, and I annoy the shit out of him, I know my dad is just as like, gets annoyed with things I do, because I do this little, like, you know, Fozzie Bear voice, Arr! Waka waka. You know, that little dumbass voice. Because I like doing it. I like doing voices. You know. It's fun. It's fun to me. Okay? I like doing this because it's fun. You know. It's not like playing Dark Souls. Like, I keep mentioning Dark Souls. And I should play the Dark Souls games just to get a point across. If you want to watch some man lose his shit over a video game, watch... Watch people play Dark Souls, or watch me play Dark Souls. I might do that. I might do a, that as a weekend thing. I don't know how to live stream Twitch, though. That's the thing. I don't know how to live stream. Um, uh, but I might play Niho or Sekiro. But, you know, then again, it's like... I Those kind of games frustrate me to no end because it's like... It's like... It's hard for the sake of being hard. You know what I mean? It's like shock humor for the sake of shock humor. It's like you can you can talk about 9/11 jokes all you want, but it's like what's the point? Like so and what? Like y y y you know. It's like pickle Rick. It's like why did you turn yourself into a damn pickle, Rick? It's like it's not that funny. It's like you just turned yourself into a pickle. It's like all right, fine, whatever. It's don't put that, like, it's it's pointless now. I don't know. I don't know. 
Oh, and I tried watching Rick and Morty, but I was I, I kind of I couldn't get through it. I could, it was like it's kind of annoying, especially with the character of Rick who keeps like saying Morty all the time or somebody's name. Listen, Jerry, I know you got this thing, Jerry, and it's like j just stop. I know you used it as a crutch, but goddamn, man. It's like, you know, and also he's a bit of an asshole. Like, well, that's the point of the character. What, being mean is it like it is good? Like, look, I, I, there's smart people out there who may come across... I know a lot of smart people, and I know some people who are smart. They don't come across mean or mean-spirited. And I think the problem with, like, most comedies in my mind, that people think it, it's funny to be mean or mean-spiritedness is funny, it's not. I, I really don't think so, because it's like... Like Eric Cartman, like Eric Cartman, it, well, the joke works with him. It's like he gets, he's mean spirited, but he gets what he gets deserved. You know what I mean? Like, you know, he'll get, you know, a probe up his butt or something like that, or some, some kind of like revenge, you know, he'll get shit upon, you know what I mean? And that's okay. You know, when it, you get what you fucking deserve. I always love that quote. I always love that quote. You give what you receive, and I don't know. I think with Rick and Morty, it's also just the fact that, like, the messaging is wrong. And it is a parody of, like, science fiction shows, too. It's like, and I'm not shitting on anybody who loves the show. No, no, I'm not talking about you. If anybody who's out there watching this, especially you, um... And you're thinking, oh, you're just going to call all Rick and Morty fans stupid because of the whole Sashabon sauce incident? No, I am only making fun of the whole fiasco with that. And also, a Dan Harmon is just a cra like, he's cringy. Like, if you were ever, if you want to see someone being, like, an absolute ass of himself, uh, watch uh, his video on Nazis. And he's just going off on, like... Something he doesn't know about and know about politics. Like, and I think it was a f f from the Charlottesville incident. Like, yes, there were Nazis there trying to promote things and stuff like that. But there was also people there trying to defend the statues that were, you know, trying to preserve history. Because, you know, it's not because, oh, we want to keep the Confederacy alive and we want to keep, you know, the idea of slavery. No, no, no. It was to keep remind it, the, the statues that were there to remind people of what happened and who these people were. Like, why are we so afraid of... Why do we need to get rid of history? I don't understand that part. Erasing history. And I know uh, one of my fans out there, Sal Tugo, is very passionate about race. Sal Tugo, excuse me. I, I I'm going to call you Sal because I keep messing your name up. Um, he's very passionate about race. And I, I want to tell you the truth, man. It's... Yo, you don't know this, but... You know, during the Civil War... Slave owners, white people, and black people were fighting together, you know, integrated. Like, they were, like, not separated. They were integrated. And, yes, black people were forced to fight because they were slaves, but they were integrated. However, with the, you know, the free South, they were segregated. I shit you not. I shit you not. Like, basically, they had the white camps and then they had the black camps. I shit you not. Look this up. This is history. Or, buddy, watch the Daryl... Uh, I forget the guy's David Darrell, I think it is, on one of the Joe Rogan uh, interviews he does, where he, it, the guy basically goes and talks to Klansmen and asks them, why are you a Klansman? And, you know, he, he basically breaks this down in the sense that people become, you know, and especially this goes back to the, like, the cult of work, people become racist or they become, like, part of these groups because they lost their mining job. They lost their job to, you know employers who would rather hire a foreigner who would work for cheaper you know it's this you know the, you know the black man and then the clan kind of sneaks in and it's like hey guess what your employer hired a black man or he hired you know uh yeah mexican he hired this guy you know you know oh, why don't you join the clan we can join the fight and get your job at they just want the full they just want the like the people in there they don't want you know they don't want to help you get your job back and that's like the tragedy of that like the clan is nothing more than you know an organization to get white people in there angry white people who lost their jobs and they don't know what to do and they're being guided by anger like they're being guided by anger you know 
You know, fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. If anybody's seen Star Wars, that that's what just happens. You mean, like... And you don't think that happens to you either? Like, you know, oh, a bunch of white people beat up this so-and-so person. Or this white person, you know, did this or that. And it's like, oh, white people are protesting at the state. And, you know, they're carrying guns. And then ask yourself... Why do you think they're racist? It's like, is it because you're leading into fear? Oh my God, a white person with a gun? I'm scared. That leads already a person with a you know, This person's doing this. Fear. I'm scared. And then you hate that person. You're angry because it's like, why are they there? Why are they there? And then it leads into hate and you don't like that person. And you just fuck them. Or you don't like the group over there. And then it leads to suffering. It's the same thing with like, I think it was better explained with X-Men, with the mutants. Because that's really, that, like, that's the brilliance of Stan Lee, too. He was, like, he used something that was more extraordinary to explain uh, segregation, racism, and, you know, bigotry. And it was brilliant. Oh, uh, let's see what else. What was they talking about? But back to the cult of work, it's, like, people are so blinded by this, like, idea of, I work hard, I'll be taken, uh, taken care of. It's like, nobody's taking care of you. Neither the unions, and I'm, t I'm tired of this people making this argument that unions will help you. It's, if you've ever, like, dealt with unions, I've dealt with unions, and they are, you know, this idea of, like, they'll take care of you thing is absolute dog shit because, you know... Again, I'm a person who just wants to work. I want to go home, work, and that's it. I'll get, I'll, I'll find insurance my way and deal with that. I've worked for companies that, like, you know, people make the whole propaganda. Like, we'll say it's like, oh, it's propaganda. They're teaching you about non-unions. Well, let me ask you something. The unions give you good money, but guess where that money's going to? Union benefits. Union meetings, the union itself, the union is getting paid. They're a bigger organization. They're they're a bigger mafia than anybody else out there. Like, they're just another mafia. I mean, like, oh, the unions will protect you and all this stuff. It's like, really? Really, I've dealt with unions, and especially with the actor skill, like Screen Actor Skill. I was an extra on Creed. I'm not br humble brag right there, but not a really humble brag. But, you know, the actors... The sc Screen Guild actors got a better lunch than, like, the regular people. We got, like, sandwiches. They got, like, a warm meal. And it's like, really? Like, why am I, like, treated like dog shit? Wait, because I'm not part of your cult? Because I'm not part of your cult of the labor union? Of, like, the Workers Unite? And this is why I don't believe in communism. I believe in the individual. I believe in the idea of the individual making his own money. You know what I mean? Like, and again, I don't think we need to, like, this is the United States of America. And yet we're having people getting two or three more jobs to support themselves. It's like, they're not getting rich. They're working three or four more jobs because the taxes are too high. Employers are paying them less. We are getting raked over by the by politicians who keep, you know, promising people more shit, more free shit. And in the grand, with this whole, like, <sighs> stimulus check thing, it's like, I would be okay if the government just gave me a small amount or we can go back to work and open up the economy again and open up America again. You know what I mean? It's like, just open the fucking country up. It's like, oh, we don't want people to die from the coronavirus. Well, you know what? I'll take my chances. For those who have weak immunity systems, I'm going to keep mouthing this, with weak immunity systems and, you know, who are elderly, um, I'll take, uh, you can stay indoors, you can stay indoors, but let me go to my barber, stop arresting people for being barbering, you know, let me eat in the park, let me have a nice coffee and bagel or muffin or a sandwich at the park, which by the way has happened, some guy in Canada was at a park and the constable, <laughs> sorry, Canada, you're silly. You're just si I love you, Canada. I love you as a northern neighbor. You're nice. You're friendly. I would never want to piss you off. I remember the War of 1812, uh, 1812 where you burnt the White House down. Um, I didn't hear an apology from that, so please. Um, I love Mexico. I love you guys, but you need, you need a revolution. 
you need a revolution and we we will be happy to get out of the middle east and help you guys kill your cartels and i know the cartels going watching kill this fucking yuter this fucking yuter bar it's like well nothing lasts forever i'm just going to remember i'm just going to just say that pro pro properly and we're coming for your business. We're, I, you know, here's the thing about, and again, I mentioned the legalizing drugs thing, and it's like, I'll talk about it in another, another argument because I don't feel like, I'm 30 minutes in and I'm going over my time limit too, so. <sighs> but, again, with the car, like, again, with, it's, this is America. I mean, why can't we not... What was I talking about? Oh, stop, to, you know, why are you guys... Not letting America be open. I don't think this is about keeping people safe. It's just about control and the power of struggle. I mean, granted, I'm in Pennsylvania right now. And if they start pushing the fucking, like, open date even further, I'm going to start protesting myself. I'm going to take a day off and just go to a Capitol, find a protest rally, and go there and just f take f pictures of this because it's like you're arresting people for just doing normal things you know eventually people are gonna get fed up with this shit and they're just gonna like start riding they're just gonna start fighting back and you think like you think that thin blue line shit's gonna save you guys like officer anderson was like is the only cop that i like no excuse me not the only cop i respect there's cops that i do respect but officer anderson made a good point about this there are cops out there who just are just following orders without thinking. You know, these are young cops who've never seen conflict, who've never seen a war, who've never experienced conflict or war, any of that matter. And they... And then they, they just follow orders, and it's like, well, let's beat this elderly man for going to the park. It's like, or pretty the governor of fucking New Jersey, who, by the way, you're as worse as Tom Wolf. Any of the blue state governors are a bunch of, you see, you know, I'm going to say the fucking word, cunts, because, and I mean that, in a, and I mean that in a mean sense, because you're just angry at Donald Trump because he's, you know, the president of the United States, and he is, and I know this from other poli political fucking thing going on there. I didn't do my research, but I did do my research. I just forget because it's six, almost six o'clock in the morning. So, yeah. But yet, you're angry at him because he's the president and, you know, he's not following your orders and, you know, he's not helping your sanction sanctuary cities out. And how dare he not help your sanctuary cities out? And now that it's you know, you guys need to open, it's like, well, no, we're not going to do what you say. Well, look at California. If anybody wants to disagree with me, look at California. It's literally becoming the movie of Escape from L.A. It's literally becoming a fucking shithole. And honestly, I, I have friends who live in California, and I, I beg you, run. Get the fuck out of there. If anything, if, if all worse comes to worse, I might think about moving to Montana. Like, I know I'm not financially secure to move there, but I will find a way to move there. Because I like, I like more of the wilderness area up there rather than Arizona or Texas. It's like, if anything, well, my choices would be Montana or Texas. Because te Montana is just like, it's that's the last remaining of the wild, man. That's like, yeah. Um, but Texas, you know, if anything... This is my thing for people moving from uh, California to the red states. Don't vote the same way you did before because it's not going to work. And don't have this prejudice against Republicans, okay? I know they don't like marijuana. I know they're kind of uptight and stiff. I know they're kind of fucking obnoxious with their Christianity and their country music and blah, 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 blah. But Christianity is not that bad. And for all you atheists out there, you know, I, I, I may make this into another video tomorrow, but next morning, uh, tomorrow morning, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about it, but I believe in gods. Like I believe there's an afterlife. I believe, and I'm, I'm going to get spiritual here because I did make a video called dreams about my brother where, yes, I believe he was in his second stage of the bar dough. Um, and I'm. Oh, by the way, news update: there will be a video of morning of dreams about my brother in the next video. So, 
Yeah, there will be another one out there. Uh, but it's this idea that I don't know. It, it's this idea that you want to stay in the sh that your your side is right. You know, I mean, like try like going to church once in a while. Like people are like, oh, the Christians don't believe in science. It's like, um, no, they just have a different way of thinking. Like, you know, oh, they don't believe in evolution. They don't believe in this. They don't. Let me well, let me ask you something. Have you ever stopped to think maybe science is the new religion? I mean, you're listening to guys in white robes. In white, white robes, a new symbol of, you know, the Michelangelo, the perfect human thing. Uh, I might make that into another video. Like, I'm not here, to, you know, to be a science denier. I believe, and I know I'm, I'm, I, I said it before, I'm not going to take vaccines, but I believe in medical science. I believe, you know, in evolution. I believe in, you know, physics. I believe in the science, all the brilliant science out there. I believe in psychology the most, but... I believe in science, okay? I believe in it, but I also, but I highly believe in, you know, there being something more extraterrestrial, something, well, I believe in that extraterrestrial, I believe in the paranormal, let me put it that way. I believe in gods and goddesses and de demons and devils, succubists. I believe in, you know, there's an afterlife, there's another plane of existence that our souls go to. I believe in a higher being. I believe in ghosts. I believe in, you know, it, it you know, j those people, the skeptics, yes, we need those guys to like clear things up, but like, I believe in that, you know? So yes, I will, I will see you guys in the next episode. And I think I'm done talking right now because I feel like someone's coming down. So I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care. Love you. Bye-bye. And remember, stay awesome.